millions of you have watched our videos. In fact, we now have over 170 million views on our channel, which is just mind-blowing. So thank you, honestly. Thank you for sticking around for so, so many years. So I'm very pleased to announce that starting today, you can also read our videos on our own website, zenofta.com slash reviews. Yes, if you're on the go and you just cannot be bothered to plug in your headphones and, you know, watch the actual videos, or your internet connection simply doesn't allow it, or you just want to sit back and chill by reading articles, well, that's all possible now. Again, just go to zoneofthe.com slash reviews and you can find all of our recent reviews there. You can even leave comments directly on the articles and interact with us. Uh, you can even watch the full video directly from there, uh, as well as even like the article, share with your friends, and also sign up for email updates. Uh, so that you get, you know, updated when a new article gets posted. So yeah, please do check it out and let us know what you guys think and we'll obviously make improvements on the go based on your feedback. So yeah, thank you, check it out and yeah, let's start the video. Okay, so before starting this video, I just want to propose a challenge to you guys. Can we hit 50,000 followers on Instagram by the end of the month? Can we do that? We're currently at, I believe, 41k. So yeah, if we can hit 50k by the end of September, we're gonna give away a pair of AirPods 2 or even AirPods 3. And if we hit by whatever miracle 100k, we're gonna give away something even more special, something from the Apple event um, that was announced at the Apple event. So yeah, let's see if we can do it. Just go to instagramcom tech, give a follow, and I don't know, have a look at some awesome content that we post there. And yeah. I'll be back at the end of the month and, you know, in a few minutes, seconds. Okay, so we just got some new iPhones, the iPhone 11, the iPhone 11 Pro, and the iPhone 11 Pro Max. These are the three new iPhones for 2019. So now here are not five, not 10, not 20, not even 30, but actually 40 things you probably didn't know about these new iPhones. Also, I, I wanna mention that the only Pro, realistically, the only Pro thing about the iPhone Pro is honestly the name. And I'll talk about the camera and everything in this video, but yeah, that, that's pretty much the only Pro Pro thing about this phone, the name. Nothing else. And you'll see why in a second, but yeah. Uh, the first thing is that we finally have a night mode, finally. We've had this on the Pixel 3 XL and you know, previous Pixel phones as well. Uh, Huawei has it, Samsung has it, and we finally have it on the iPhone as well, just, you know, a year later. But unfortunately, Apple is now pulling a Samsung on us where they're actually restricting features, software features to just newly released phones. Like Samsung has done it in the past with the Note 10 versus uh, the Note line and the Galaxy S line. So for example, the night mode, this is a software feature, but it's restricted to the iPhone 11s only. That's really, really bad. Also, there's a quick record button for videos in the Photos app, um, in the camera app. So we, you actually hold the camera shutter button and you can record a video. That's also exclusive to, um, yeah, the iPhone 11. That's really bad as well. That's, you know, software feature that's very, very easy to do. And if you're wondering, what about burst shots? Well, you just hold on that button and then you slide it to the left and those are the burst shots. Next up, we have something that Apple hasn't really talked about at all. And that is a brand new chip, not the A13, but a U1 chip. Uh, and this is pretty big. So it allows your iPhone to be very, very precise at locating objects or, you know, other U1 equipped devices. Uh, with a margin of error of just five centimeters versus five meters that Bluetooth 5.0, for example, has. This means that not only you can locate other iPhones much more precisely, but AirDrop would also work much better since it can now prioritize devices much faster. You can also pinpoint your device uh, towards the one that you want to drop files to. So that's uh, that's pretty cool. Also, Apple did say that this is just the beginning. So, you know, that tile thing, that tile competitor that Apple's working on, that's coming pretty soon. Unfortunately, it wasn't announced at the event, but it will very, very likely feature that you want chip. And only the iPhone 11s, all of them feature this chip. And I cannot wait for the YouTube processor because there you go, Apple will be putting, uh, preloading YouTube back on the iPhones, if you, if you get it. Then the iPhones are actually now thicker than they were before. So the iPhone 11 Pro Max is 0.4 millimeters thicker than the iPhone XS Max was, the 11 Pro is the same, and then the 11 is actually the same thickness as the iPhone XR was, at 8.3 millimeters, even though the leaks actually suggested it uh, to be getting thinner. Okay, now let's talk about some more negatives. There's no 5G. Now, that's not that big of a deal, uh, but Samsung has it, OnePlus has it, Oppo has it, LG has it. You know, 5G isn't that well developed just yet. Uh, it will be coming next year, so for me, that's not really an issue, but you know, if you do care about 5G, and you have upgraded to a 5G plan, then you know, the iPhones, none of them have it. And something that I was really disappointing to see is that this is a, so this is a pro, right, a pro phone, but it's lacking a pro display. 
and I don't mean the, you know, really XDR brand new display that I'll mention in a second, um, I mean a high refresh rate display. So the OnePlus One Pro has it, the iPad Pro has it, the Razer Phone 1 and 2, the Asus RG gaming phones 1 and 2 also have it, but yeah, we still have a 60 hertz refresh rate display on something that should be a Pro phone. Then something else that's lacking, and this is quite a surprise for pretty much everyone, is reverse wireless charging. This was uh, leaked and rumored so heavily, and it was supposed to be one of the key selling features of the new iPhone. And it was removed, like last minute apparently. Also, you know how Apple moved the Apple logo to the middle of the phone? Uh, there were some reports that the reason why they've done that is because that would be the indicator for reverse wireless charging. You know, for charging your AirPods, for example, the second generation with the wireless charging case. But yeah, unfortunately, they, um, they uh, decided not to include that in the end. So again, a bit of an irony, because if you have a Samsung phone, you can charge the AirPods from the back of a Samsung phone or Huawei phone, but not the iPhone. And something else that was apparently also removed last minute is Apple Pencil support. We've actually had a lot of leaks on this, many reports, and even all XR case leaks that showcased uh, an actual Apple Pencil, a miniature version of the Apple Pencil being used on the iPhone. Yeah, this was canned last minute just like the reverse wireless charging was. So yeah, so far it's not looking that great because the iPhone 11s were already a disappointing upgrade, even with those features that ended up being removed. So now it's just, you know, an iPhone XS Max with the wide angle lens. That's pretty much what this thing is. However, the camera is pretty impressive and here is a few interesting things about the camera. For example, did you guys know that a telephoto lens now has an f2.0 aperture from the f2.4 on the XS Max, which means that it can actually let up to 40% more light into the sensor. That's pretty cool. And also, portrait mode is not only restricted to the telephoto lens right now, but also the brand new wide angle. So there you go, just like on a Samsung phone, you can choose between which lenses to use when you're taking uh, portrait mode shots. Speaking of the new wide angle lens, you can also use that when taking panoramas. So panoramas are now much wider. But probably the most impressive things in terms of the camera for me is just how easily you can transition between the lenses. It's basically a smoothless operation. You have that wheel and you can adjust that to switch between the lenses flawlessly. And what's even more impressive is that autofocus and exposure is actually kept between the lenses. So if you autofocus and adjust the uh, white balance and you know the, the exposure on one of the lenses, when you switch to the other ones, they would have the exact same, the exact same framing, the exact same exposure and the exact same autofocus. Focus. And the main lens got a pretty big update or upgrade. So it now has 100% focus pixels, which means that it can use every single pixel from the 12 megapixel sensor to focus. So this means that focusing would be much faster and much more accurate. But this is only on the main lens and not the telephoto or the brand new wide angle. And then the flash, the True Tone flash also got some improvements. So it is now 36% brighter. Now the iPhone XS had the pretty big upgrade in terms of the camera and that was thanks to the smart HDR. Uh, that was thanks to the Apple 8 processor. Now this has been further improved now with the Apple 8 13 chip and apparently if you have a if you take a shot and you have I don't know a piece of cloth uh, or a jacket or whatever it would actually recognize that that's a jacket and it would sharpen just that object so it, it's much more it's smarter now uh, which would result or should result in much better photos uh, in auto mode oh and also you can now do 4k 60 on all the lenses yes unlike a lot of Android smartphones that have a wide angle lens and a telephoto uh, and they're very very different from one another Apple's trying to keep all of them in the same uh, in the same lines so yeah you can do 4k 60 on the main lens, telephoto, and the wide angle. Also, Apple demoed this Filmic Pro app that I've been using for many years now. It's amazing. It's the best app for taking videos on an iPhone. Uh, and with the iPhone 11 Pros, you can actually record multiple scenes at the same time, or at least preview multiple scenes at the same time. I'm not sure if you can record all four, but yeah, you can preview all scenes with all the cameras on your smartphone at the same time. And then remember the extended dynamic range that we got with the iPhone XS? Well, that was actually restricted to 4K 30. With the iPhone 11s, we can now have that up to 4K 60. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Better colors, uh, even in 4K 60. And speaking of 4K 60, we can now do 4K 60 with a front-facing camera as well. This is huge because before we only had 1080p, not even 2K, 1080p 60 with a front facing camera. Now we can do 4K 60, which is just amazing. And speaking of the front camera, it is also a wider angle now, kind of. So the lens is the same. However, we now have a 12 megapixel sensor. So when you rotate the phone in landscape, it actually switches to the full 12 megapixel resolution. Uh, you have seven megapixels when you take photos and portraits. And then you also get more people in the scene because you know we have more pixels and then the image is actually wider. And then the last camera feature that I want to mention is something called Deep Fusion. So Apple only showed us a preview of this. Uh, so it's not 
not out yet. It will be launching by the end of the year. But essentially what it does is that it takes nine photos and then uh, there, there's long exposure photos and short exposure photos. And then it combines those photos and it gives you a really, really high resolution image. We don't really know the resolution of that, but uh, the leak suggested it would be about a 48 megapixel photo, which is pretty reasonable considering that uh, the panoramas are about 60 something megapixels in size. Okay, what else? Well, water resistance has also been improved quite a bit. So on the iPhone 11 Pros, we now have up to four meters of depth, up to 30 minutes. This is up from two meters that we had on the iPhone XS. And then on the iPhone 11, we now have up to two meters, up from one meter 30 minutes that we had on the iPhone XR. But here's something that Apple doesn't really mention. Did you guys know that water damage is not covered under, under warranty? Not even Apple Care. Um, so yeah, if you know you take it to the swimming pool and if it breaks by accident or I don't know, maybe it's a faulty unit, Apple won't replace it or repair it. So that's you know, you can pay for a repair, but that's gonna be outrageously expensive. And then the audio, interesting enough, has been improved again. Uh, it was really, really good on the iPhone XS, for example, uh, especially the XS Max, but now we have spatial audio. Uh, we have Dolby Atmos support, so the speakers basically are trying to mimic that surround sound uh, system that you would get from, you know, an actual surround sound system. Uh, the Note 10 does the same thing, the S10 does the same thing, so I'm guessing it would be very, very similar to those. And then Face ID has also been improved. It's now 30% faster, however, I think that this is because of iOS 13. iOS 13 also makes, uh, already makes Face ID 30% faster. And then it's also, uh, we have a wider angle lens on Face ID, which means that you can actually use it from some more obscure angles. And then we also have Wi-Fi 6, or Wi-Fi 802.11ax, which is the next standard of Wi-Fi, and this is three times faster than Wi-Fi 5, or Wi-Fi 802.11ax. AC, with theoretical speeds of up to 9.6 gigabits per second. Now, obviously, probably none of you have that at home, that, you know, ISP speed. Probably none of you. Uh, so the biggest advantage here would actually be the bandwidth. So if you have a Wi-Fi 6 enabled router and many Wi-Fi 6 enabled devices in your home, then you can pretty much say goodbye to any traffic congestion. And at the event, Apple praised the display on the iPhone 11 Pros so, so much. They're called the Super Retina XDR displays. Um, but did you guys know it's the same panel as on the Note 10? Yes, obviously it doesn't have the camera cutout, but it's the same display technology that Samsung uses in the Note 10 and the S10. Yes, same technology. Um, the S11s, by the way, would be getting a big display upgrade in February to March next year. So, you know, the iPhone will be surpassed in a, just a few months. And, you know, again, same display as on the Note 10 and yes then. And the main advantage here is the brightness. So we now have 800 nits maximum brightness uh, outdoors versus 625 nits. And then we also have 1200 nits brightness in HDR versus 1000 nits that we had before. But the thing is, even outdoors, I found that my iPhones in the past overheated quite significantly and the brightness was locked to like 50% or so. And this, this affects all the iPhones, uh, all generations. So I'm not really sure if the iPhone Pros would be affected very likely. And in that case, you know, what's what's the point of having, you know, 800 nits if you cannot really use that outdoors? But then a second display improvement is actually the contrast. So we now have 2 million to 1 versus 1 million to 1 that we had before on the Tenaces. So that's basically double. So yeah, colors and everything should look much, much better on the new display. And speaking of the display, goodbye 3D Touch. It's now gone. It's been removed, unfortunately. So for any 3D Touch gestures, you now have to hold on the display instead of, you know, actually pressing harder. And then we also have something called haptic touch. This is what we had on the iPhone XR, uh, and it's basically an improved vibration motor, by the way. This was leaked before as Leap Haptics. Uh, however, there was no mention of this improved haptic engine at the keynote, but this is very likely to happen and be the case because 3 touch has been removed and, you know, uh, it's just a hold and the haptic engine now in terms of the gesture. Personally, I didn't really use 3 touch at all, um, so it's not that big of a loss for me, but for those of you who have used it in the past, this is going to be a noticeable downgrade. It's still, like I said, it's still usable, but uh, uh, it's worse. And then a pretty cool feature on the Note 10 was something called audio zoom. When you know when you record video and you zoom in, the audio will also be increased. You know the gain will be increased on the microphone, so that makes a lot of sense. And apparently Apple is also doing this with the iPhone 11 Pros. But probably the second biggest change after a camera is the battery life. It has been improved significantly on all the new iPhones. So on the iPhone 11, we now have an extra hour of battery life when playing video uh, from the iPhone XR. On the iPhone 11 Pro, we now have four extra hours of battery life from the iPhone XS. And then on the iPhone 11 Pro Max, we now have five extra hours of battery life from the iPhone XS Max. So for example, we now get uh, on the iPhone 11 Pro Max, we get 20 hours of video playback from 15, we get 
80 hours of audio playback from 65. So yeah, this is, and Apple even calls this, the most dramatic leap in battery life ever in an iPhone. And this is mostly thanks to the increased power efficiency of the Apple 13 processor. And speaking of the battery, we now have fast charging on the iPhone, but wait, wait, did you guys know that we already had fast charging on the iPhones? From the iPhone 6, actually, yes. You just need a more powerful charger, such as an iPad charger, uh, rather than the 5 watt one that Apple bundles inside the box. So as long as you have something more powerful than 5 watts, you know, it will also charge your phone your iPhone 6 and newer much faster. But with the iPhone 11 Pros, we also get finally a fast charger bundled inside the box. So it's an 80 watt charger, uh, USB-C to lightning cable as well. And you can charge your iPhone Pros to 50% in just 30 minutes. That's really impressive. Um, but again, other manufacturers can do it faster, like the OnePlus 7 Pro, the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 that can be fully charged uh, with a fast charger in like 40 minutes. Not even joking, that's insane. Uh, so yeah, the iPhone is still a bit slow, and guess what? You only get that, the fast charger bundled, with the iPhone 11 Pros, not the iPhone 11. Also, did you guys know that the iPhones also have dual SIM, kinda? So they have an actual SIM and then an eSIM, and the eSIM has been around since the iPhone XS. And this is pretty cool because this is theft-proof. So yeah, if you register your iPhone with your carrier and have an eSIM, then your SIM would be embedded into the phone. So if it gets stolen, it will always, always have an internet connection as long as it's obviously turned on. And now here's something interesting. So the iPhone 11 has a glossy back and a matte camera module. Then the iPhone 11 Pro has a matte back and then a glossy camera module. So it seems like Apple's not really trying to hide the camera module at all. Instead, they're trying to highlight it like, you know, look at that. This is our new module. Then Apple claimed that the glass in the iPhone 11s is the strongest glass front and back in any phone on the market. But here's the thing, Apple claimed the same thing with the iPhone XS's, and mine <laughs> shattered when it fell from my couch. Not even joking, fell from my couch to my wooden floor uh, it fell on the antenna band and it cracked the whole back. I don't know if you can see this, but yeah, there you go. This is the strongest glass in the phone, apparently. Now, to Apple's defense, they did show some actual drop tests and even some strong water splashes in the official TV ad. So, yeah, they haven't showed this last year, so I'm guessing that this means that, you know, the glass is actually significantly stronger than on the iPhone XS. I really hope that that's the case. And yeah, um, the storage. Let's talk about the storage. The 64 gigabyte option is still the baseline. Really, Apple, on a pro phone. The Note 10 Plus, for example, offers you 256 gigabytes, right? So that's four times, and the microSD card uh, slot for less. Yeah, the Note 10 Plus costs less than the iPhone Pro. Not the Pro Max, even the iPhone Pro. And speaking of the price, the iPhone 11 is now $50 less than the iPhone XR was. So no cost, $700 versus $750, which is pretty good. However, in the UK, uh, the iPhone 11 is 730 pounds, which is more expensive than the iPhone XR last year. And then the iPhone 11 Pros in the US, they're the same price as last year. Uh, however, in the UK, they're 50 pounds more, which is quite significant. As in, the iPhone 11 Pro costs $999 in the US and 1,050 pounds in the UK. And if you convert that in dollars, it's $1,300. So yeah, $300 more, uh, which is a very, very significant difference. But there you go, these were 40 things you probably didn't know about the new iPhones. I hope you guys learned something from this video. If you have, or even if you haven't, uh, do subscribe to notifications for more cool tech videos like this one, hopefully, was. Uh, yeah, give this a like if you enjoyed it, let me know. Don't forget about the uh, giveaway on Instagram. If we had 50k by the end of the month, we'll give away a pair of AirPods too. And maybe even something more special if we buy some miracle hits uh, 100k. Yeah, thank you for watching. I'm Daniel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zenoptech, signing out. Cheers.